Hey, welcome to my lunch hour. Stan, Energy Man here for another great show where we get to talk about my favorite subject, which is hydrogen. So nice background today. We'll be talking more about that when we get into uh, our guest. Um, but I'd like to start off talking about some uh, equipment I got briefed on this week uh, called um, Simple Fuel. And uh, it's a hydrogen station. If Vizuri can bring up the pictures, it's a, it's a hydrogen station basically that makes hydrogen and dispenses it. Uh, so you can see it's really kind of an elegant looking thing. It's, it's actually from France and they're an international company that, that just uh, one of the gentlemen, I believe he was from Nuvera, helped start Nuvera, is now helping this company called McPhee with this portable hydrogen station, which is really slick looking. Anyway, it's uh, not only a dispenser, it's actually a standalone hydrogen station. So you connect water up to it and an electrical, probably a 240 volt connection. And it can make, this particular model can make 10 kilograms a day of hydrogen and store it and dispense it. Um, I think it stores it at probably 5,000 PSI. And if you have a 10,000 PSI vehicle, I think it runs a compressor. So it's not a quick fill. Uh, like some of the regular hydrogen dispensers at a station. <clears throat> it's actually going to take probably 10 or 15 minutes to fill a vehicle if it's going to go up to 10,000 PSI. But it is a standalone station. Um, they're looking at, for something like this, um, around $170,000 to $200,000. So it's not a homeowner's model. But it is something that could get a, a small community that's just starting off in hydrogen vehicles get them going in um, into hydrogen. And uh, if we can throw up the second shot, it shows how you can incorporate it into a gas station because um, most people don't realize this, but you can actually put hydrogen dispensers right into regular um, petroleum refueling stations. And this one is designed to fit right there on the island uh, between the other, the other uh, dispensers, the other gasoline and diesel dispensers. And again, this thing makes the hydrogen right on site and dispenses it right there. Just, excuse me, just drive up, put your credit card in, and you're off and running. So that's just a little update on, on what's out there. And, and I'll, I'm going to try and get uh, the folks from McPhee to, to come on the show. Maybe I can Skype them in on one of my shows. But today we have uh, Mr. Claude Culbertson from the American Hydrogen Association in Phoenix, Arizona, one of my favorite places to go visit when I'm on the mainland. And he's here to uh, just kind of update us on what's going on with the American Hydrogen Association. And we'll talk a little bit about um, Roy McAllister and the work he's doing out there and the things that, uh, that the American Hydrogen, Hydrogen Association does to kind of promote hydrogen, not just in Phoenix and around the Arizona area, but worldwide. So Claude, thanks for being on the show with me today. I appreciate it. Uh, great to be here. Well. I, I guess you get over here once a year, whether you like it or not, because your wife's from here. Right, so, right. So you get to come visit Hawaii. But uh, what got you into hydrogen and working with Roy McAllister over there in Arizona? Well, years ago, uh, I was talking to a young man who was in uh, solar, and he was uh, uh, in charge of the Arizona Solar Association Library. And uh, we were talking, and I said, what? What I really want to do is I would like to build a hydrogen-powered car. And he says, oh, well, you need to talk to Roy McAllister. And I said, oh, who's that? <laughs> and so he gave me the information, and the next day I called up Roy, and uh, I told him that uh, I was inter interested in hydrogen and that I uh, had a little welding shop. And uh, he said, oh, come on over and visit us. So I went over, and... I've been a member of the American Hydrogen Association ever since. And, and uh, uh, Did you build your car? No, I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm still working on it. I have a, a little car. Um, it's an old Carmen Ghia, and I bought it with, this, with the idea of converting it to run on hydrogen, and I've had it a lot of years, and it's still running on gasoline. But... We're getting closer. Okay. And uh, we haven't given up. Uh, and persistence, I guess, is one of the secrets to see. So what, what's, your, what's your design going to be like on that, on that car? Is it like, uh, are you going to just have the fuel cell charging the battery and have the battery run the car? Or no. What are you, no. How are you going to do it? No. What we're, uh, <clears throat> our um, 
one of our focuses and my main focus is running uh, is making uh, a fuel a liquid fuel that can be stored at room temperature uh, that's basically a net hydrogen fuel and made from hydrogen and co2 and um, and nitrogen and called metrol and uh, <coughs> So, so it'll be an internal combustion yes. engine modified to run on, on this metrol fuel. Yes. And if I understand right, because I have been talking to Roy, the metrol is a liquid fuel that you can actually sequester the carbon as, and the hydrogen goes right into the internal combustion engine. Well, that's, that's kind of how it works. Okay. But um, Good, the, you can give me the details then. Right. The, and and uh, I'm a mechanic. I'm not a chemist. And, okay. And, and, and Roy, um, he gives me the jobs to do, and you know, sketches or sometimes drawings, and you know, what he wants built, and 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 uh, I you try fabricate to, it. I try to manufacture okay. what it is he needs for doing the uh, experiments. But basically, the fuel be stored in a regular gas tank, and then uh, pumped through um, a reactor that's heated by waste heat from the engine and converts the uh, liquid fuel to a gaseous fuel that uh, is a combination of hydrogen and, and uh, uh, CO uh, mostly. And then when it burns, all the carbon that is burned is just what you put into the fuel. I mean, right. so you're, you're not creating. It, you're making it from carbon dioxide and nitrogen out of the air. Right. So you're carbon neutral. Right. Okay. Right, and, and and of course we have to have hydrogen to, uh, to create the fuel initially. You know, to put with the with the CO2 and the and the nitrogen, <coughs> and uh, and so however you can get the hydrogen, whether it's electrolysis or um, you know steam uh, methane reformation. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, and that's one of our main goals is to take a lot. Of, or to be able to take methane from sewage and garbage and whatever and take the carbon out of it and utilize the carbon as a okay. resource and then have the, get the hydrogen basically for free and mm -hmm. combine that with uh, the other gas. So, so that's where you would sequester the carbon making the liquid fuel. You'd take the methane and get the carbon out of it and make the liquid fuel with nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen you've gotten from the methane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you got a liquid fuel, you can store it in a liquid tank right. in your car, just in, and it would probably be about the same energy density, roughly, as liquid fuel. So you yeah. Same, roughly the same mileage. Am I, am I making decent assumptions here? Right. Okay. Yeah, pretty close. So and and <clears throat> um, the fact that we take that liquid fuel and we add a lot of heat energy to it from the engine boosts the energy density and makes it more okay. more efficient. So, yeah. so a lot of internal combustion engines that they try and put hydrogen in, they can't cram enough hydrogen in there to really make it work. So you're saying as it comes out of the liquid state through this heat exchanger, basically, um, it's hot enough that it's also still under pressure and you're pushing it into the cylinder under pressure. Well, yeah, it'll be, uh, it, it won't necessarily, it won't, it will be cooled somewhat, um, but then it will be under uh, considerable pressure and injected directly into the cylinder okay. with uh, the engine not throttled and the injection and the, the ignition after top dead center. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really efficient. Okay. You, you don't lose that. Uh, yeah, I spend quite a bit of time talking to Roy about this. Mm -hmm. For this Roy McAllister we're talking about, by the way, is a PhD. Uh, he's a chemical engineer, holds a, at least a half a million patents in hydrogen. <laughs> I don't know how many he holds, but it's a lot. Yeah. And um, and so he's he's uh, works with the American Hydrogen. Actually, he's the founder of the American Hydrogen Association, and he's working on this metrol concept because the theory being. Um, that we have so many internal combustion engine cars on the road that by the time we get fuel cell cars to replace the internal combustion engines, it's going to be years and years and decades and decades before we make any real headway. But with all the internal combustion engine cars on the road, if you can do a modification and convert the vehicles to run off this metrol, 
um, you can start cleaning up the, uh, the greenhouse gases much earlier because the conversion is relatively simple. Like Claude says, you basically can keep the liquid fuel tank. In fact, if, according to Roy, you can actually run off both fuels. You just have to have a computer changing the timing back to your old timing for the old fuel and the, like you said, top dead center for the new fuel. And then you need to modify how it's injected into the engine. So in a diesel engine, you'd actually change the, the glow plug out for an injector igniter. And then in, internal, in a gasoline engine, you would take the spark plug out and change it with an injector igniter. So what happens is if you have fuel injection on your regular car and you're running it with gasoline and you convert it and you're going to run off gasoline, you'd use the same fuel injector and the igniter to ignite the gasoline. But if you want to switch to this Metro fuel, it would be a switch in the, in the cockpit in the, in the compartment and you'd switch to the Metro and then it would be injecting the hydrogen through the same spark plug igniter that's in the, in the cylinder. Exactly. And then there's also the part of, um, uh, right now, what Claude was talking about, an unthrottled carburetor, when you, when you have a, a gas engine, you basically control the amount of oxygen that goes in, whether you accelerate or decelerate. You're pumping fuel in there, but you're also controlling the oxygen. In this one, you, you try and get as much oxygen in the cylinder as you can. It's, un it's unthrottled and you control the acceleration by how much hydrogen you push in. Right. And so it's, it's a little different concept. And you also are injecting the hydrogen at top dead center, not below. Right. So you're not compressing a gas-air mix. You're compressing uh, an air mix, and then hydrogen goes in at the last second, right. right before you ignite, and it gives you that oomph that you need that other internal combustion engines don't give you. Right. How's that? Did I do That's great. Job? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's what the, the guys at the American Hydrogen Association do for fun. And hopefully their fun will turn into something great for the environment and, uh, and all of us that are, that are you know, thinking about getting into hydrogen on our vehicles. So what are some of the other things that uh, the, the Hydrogen Association does um, that, to try and, and make people aware of, uh, of what, what hydrogen well, can do? Well, we're interested in, in all forms of sustainable energy and energy conservation and uh, clean water and clean air and uh, uh, actually you know helping uh, one, one of the projects that uh, we're involved in and I'm, I'm not so much involved in it but is this uh, um, micro dwell project okay. and uh, where figure out how to make dwellings for people, uh, give, give, get people off the streets and into dwellings where they can be safe and comfortable and, and do it with... Um, Self-sustaining so energy. Right. And, okay. and using uh, you know, forms of solar for, for uh, energy and for energy storage by using... Uh, electrolyzers and so on to generate your own hydrogen and uh, so it's a uh, it's a project that we are working on with other organizations that are, that's their primary focus is uh, is helping people with their habitat okay. and uh, so uh, and we've got it's it's kind of neat we have some uh, uh, members that are architects and uh, and builders and so on and, and they all get together and they get their ideas out there and, and uh, one of these days we're going to be able to put together a little community of people that you know a place for people uh, one, one of the main focuses is people that are the kids that are are uh, aging out of foster care and don't have any place to go yeah. and uh, and they don't have any, any uh, backup, any family to turn to, anybody to help out, mm -hmm. no support system. And, and well, boy, we have, they, they really suffer. We have a homeless issue here in Honolulu. Oh, yeah, that right. We need to take care of, as I'm sure you've noticed, driving around with your wife. But uh, that may be a great solution. Yeah. So when we come back from our break, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like, you know, what it looks like for uh, this mini dwelling. And uh, we'll be back in a minute. 
Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna, and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, the Politics in Hawaii series. Join us each week as we have guest after guest talking about the policy and the politics of our state, of our islands, and of what really matters to each of us. So please join us each week and engage in that conversation. Mahalo. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am your host for Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and renewable energy future. I'm so excited to be here with you to talk about some of the most important energy issues of our day. And most importantly, who can we bring together? Energy engineers, artists, musicians, accountants, advocates, young people, who can we bring together to talk about how we can make this path together by walking and reach 100% renewable energy? Please join me Tuesdays at 1 p.m. for Power Up Hawaii. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan Energy Man here with Claude Culbertson from the American Hydrogen Association. And they do their work out of Phoenix, Arizona, actually around Mesa, Arizona, which is, I guess, the, what is that, the east side of Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah, Phoenix is so big, you can't just drive through it in a couple minutes. It takes like an hour to get through the middle of Phoenix. So, uh, so you've been working with a lot of folks, including Arizona State University, and who, what's the school there that... Uh, the Julianne Wrigley School of Sustainability. Okay. And they, they helped work on this project where you built a trailer and... and well, uh, no, uh, that, that was another small okay. organization called... Uh, yeah, it's a program that uh, is uh, started, I guess, there in Phoenix called Microdrill. And all people build different, um, their different ideas of mm -hmm. what a Microdrill should look like. And, and generally they're like 600 square feet uh, or, or less. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, they're, pay, they're Dwellings that you could build, you know, out in the forest or something, you know, where you want to be energy right. independent and you just want to go out there and Well, those, and those dwellings are getting real popular, not just for, to resolve homeless or, or you know, those kind of situations, but it, the, the new generation of uh, young folks that are starting families and stuff, they're, they're not ready to have kids right away, and they realize they're going to change jobs every few years. So they decide they're going to buy uh, one of these little micro homes or tiny homes uh -huh. that's only a couple hundred square feet on wheels. And then they move to where the first job is and they do their job there for five years. Then they know they're going to travel several hundred miles to another city and go to their next job. And instead of buying a house, they invest in this tiny home and it gives them the ability to A, keep control of their credit. They're not in a big mortgage right off the bat. And B, have a nice little house that's all their own that they can make the way they want. And then they just rent some property on somebody's farm to yeah. have a little garden outside or something. And, and it's all sustainable. It's all, um, you can put some solar panels up and a generator if you need it and some batteries and you know maybe a UPS or a, a, some kind of power control system. Right. So that's basically what you you guys started many years ago, but it's now just catching on. So you, you're ahead of your time. <laughs> but let's take a little tour right behind you in the background there. And then Zuri can, can sit, and this is, uh, let me see, what is this? Part of the electrical panel, and it looks like the in, incoming hydrogen from outside. There's a, mm -hmm. a storage tank outside there. So you look on the bottom, you see a, a water separator, and, a, and as the thing comes to the left, you see um, a stainless steel tube that drops down and goes across. So there's actually a water heater that runs off hydrogen, and right. then, and then a, a fuel cell system that, that provides electricity for the house and also runs your stove, your electric stove, and, um, or any of the other utilities that require electricity in the house. So as you back out, there's a hydrogen tank under the sink there, looks like. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this little house is pretty bare bones. It's just this, this is actually a photo of the inside of the dwelling, just to give an example of, of how the system works. And it lets the wiring and everything show so that people can see how simple the, the setup is to actually have your own solar panel on the roof and lighting and appliances hooked up in your house and you can actually, can actually you could live in there. Mm -hmm. um, so what are, what are some of the things you talk about when you show this to folks uh, on the inside? Well, uh, the, uh, there's the, the tankless water heater, 
which uh, is... Uh, is that on the outside? Is it hanging on the outside? Or? No, it's right there on the wall. Okay, is that right above the sink? Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, and... Uh, and it runs off hydrogen? Yeah. Okay. And uh, ideally, the, uh, the uh, solar panels out there would, uh, would power the electrolyzer, which would generate the hydrogen. In actuality, we're, we're not able to do that because we don't have a, a uh, way to Electron. pressurize okay. The, okay. the hydrogen. Uh, but the, the solar panels run the LED lighting and they uh, 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 run the... Uh, uh, There's a little cooktop in there too, if I'm not mistaken. I yeah, but that's like also that. hydrogen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is it hydrogen rather rather gas or is yeah. it... Okay. So you yeah. can, yeah, a lot of people don't realize you can actually cook with hydrogen, too, as a gas. So it can be just like your propane or natural gas. And then you can also make electricity from the hydrogen, running it through a fuel cell. Right. So you can do both. Right. We have, um, uh, in, uh, we've had in the past some chefs that were very uh, interested in using hydrogen in, in this one Chef put on a, this really nice dinner at the at the Mansion Club, mm. and uh, but what they love about the hydrogen is it adds no flavors to the to the right. food. It has no, you know, it doesn't it, have any odors. In the right thing. when when hydrogen burns, it's actually six thousand degrees steam, wow. and and it's. Uh, but it's so clean. I mean, yeah. that's all it is. It's just hot water. Basically. It's very directional too. It, it just heats up right. It's really easy to control. Yes. Yes. There's yeah, no, the chef's really very like it. little radiant heat. It's it's all convection mm -hmm. and uh, uh, conduction. And uh, so uh, we have to real pale blue flame. Uh, if there's a lot of smog in the air or you know other contaminants, then you get some color in your flame. But for the most part, it's it's a very pale blue flame okay. and uh, uh, well, very so, clean. Let's look at the outside of the trailer too. This is this is actually a little trailer that they uh, that they haul around with them. So you see, on the roof they have some solar, on the side they have some solar, and they can actually tow it around um, and and take it. The little stairs fold up, flip up there, and w literally on the other side of the. I took the picture of the inside, just on the opposite wall of the uh, the solar panels there. So. The background that you're seeing today is just on the other side of that solar panel. And um, uh, like Claude says, the only thing missing is electrolyzer. And, uh, and those things are actually pretty small too. You could, you could put one outside in a fairly small area to make your, uh, your hydrogen. I will tell you though that you probably need a little bit more PV to make, mm -hmm. a, to make enough hydrogen on a daily basis than what this uh, little model gives you, but it proves the concept that you can make hydrogen uh, from sunlight and from water and then run a little house off of it. So that's what, that's what they do. And that's a good example of how to initiate people. Because uh, most of the time, until people see it, they don't really understand it. Right. And this is a really great example of how to, to get it out in public and uh, let students talk about what they know about hydrogen and, and demonstrate what you can do. Right. And, you know, it, uh, the, the technology is there, it just needs to be improved and tweaked and, and you get people interested in it and you get the, you know, particularly young people uh, interested in, in improved ways to build electrolyzers and build uh, uh, all the ways that you can utilize uh, photovoltaic and use uh, heat from solar and, and uh, uh, what we need to do is is promote all these different avenues of, of uh, sustainability, particularly in using solar, and, uh, and see which ones come to the top, which ones are successful. Great. Uh, well, one of the things that helped me understand a lot was a DVD that I got from uh, Roy McAllister, and um, we can throw that one up on the screen, Zuri, called Chemistry and Manufacture of Hydrogen. and. Um, it's an adaptation uh, from a text, but it's basically Roy McAllister talking about um, some of the uh, technologies and how to actually 
um, safely manufacture hydrogen different ways and the history of it because people tend to think of hydrogen as high-tech new technology but in reality it's from back in the 1800s and even the fuel cell which is a new piece was early 1900s at the latest I mean it was it, it goes back into the 1800s Long time, as well yeah. <clears throat> so the technology is high-tech but it's not necessarily new tech and um, so that that's a great a great intro it's really easy to understand mr. McAllister is a very soft-spoken uh, very articulate gentleman and it's great to listen to him explain the chemistry and the science behind all this technology and uh, it's really easy to get to in fact there's a there's a great place to order it from www.knowledgepublications.com it's uh, you can you can order this uh, DVD and several other good um, publications uh, from that website to help you understand how to how to work with hydrogen so another great thing with that um, the hydrogen association does they put out a newsletter from time to time right and there are some great quotes I gotta put my glasses on the, this one I just got literally just got in the mail today but there's two quotes that I think are great one for the political season the opposite of progress is Congress and that's a Mark Twain quote so well, if you just like good quotes, this uh, Hydrogen Association newsletter is great. The other one is, if, I had, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have asked for faster horses. And that was Henry Ford. So, you know, they look at the, the very practical application of hydrogen and, and how people are kind of adverse to accepting new technology or, you know, you ask them what they want. They want more of what they already have. They don't want to look at what's new. But some of the other great articles in uh, this, this thing is uh, they talk about the mission of the association, a field trip they took to one of the uh, ethanol plants. Um, they, they list some of the hydrogen events coming up, um, give you some more publications that they reviewed that they, they like. Um, they talk about high pressure tubing and fitting uh, for hydrogen, which is primarily swedge lock, which is the commercial name for uh, the fittings that are used in most of our arc plumbing and uh, some of the technologies that, that are compatible with swedge lock but that you have to use and you have to learn to use safely when you're dealing with the high pressure hydrogen. Um, and then of course uh, if you want to become a member of the American Hydrogen Association you can contact them. I think uh, Zuri can you throw up that there you go the HDB uh, Clean Air Org and become a member of the American Hydrogen Association and help them spread the word and also get, get a hold of some of the great materials that they have uh, to learn from. So what are, what's some wisdom, words of wisdom you can let us part with, Claude, oh. from, from the hydrogen work that you've been doing? When are we gonna see that Carmen Ghia rolling first? I, man, I wanna, I wanna have that on the road and take it around, you know, bring it to Hawaii, whatever. And, uh, and you know, Every year I think, wow, this is the year it's going to happen. I'm going to have it on the road. But um, uh, we're we'll working out all the, the little bugs and okay. getting there. But the main thing is, you know, we got to quit putting carbon in the atmosphere. I agree. We've got to make good use of the carbon, and we got to generate hydrogen by whatever means. You know, and there's lots of different ways to do it. And but But if we can make renewable fuels from our sewage and garbage we gotta you know we, those are resources that w that we generally don't consider resources we call them problems yep. but uh, but there's a lot of energy there if we just make use of it okay